my dear students welcome to virtual classroom of english department ss college hailakandi i am dr ramobrot chakraborty today's online class is designed for the students of hs first year and the subject is alternative english dear students perhaps you are familiar with the textbook of alternative english yes it is chinar and i will start the second lesson a poem of this particular textbook chinar and the name of the poem is when autumn came this poem was composed by faiz ahmed faiz now before starting the text i have to repeat a message for everyone when reading or attending a virtual class or physical class i wish everyone to be ready with the textbook otherwise you cannot get the real taste of the particular lesson now coming back to the text when autumn came it was i have already told that it was written by faiz ahmed faiz now it is customary to learn something about the poet now this is the photograph of faiz ahmed faiz he was born on february 13 1911 in sialkot which is now part of pakistan he was trained in the classical persian poets rumi and hafiz and he learned to read english french and russian literature while growing up he has achieved today an iconic legacy his name carrying a distinctive ring that many pakistanis hold within their hearts now these are the features of his poems his poems both challenged structures of power and the failure of governments to heed the concerns of the downtrodden they reflected a new direction for poetry itself a revolutionary one most importantly faiz adopted and adapted the forms images and themes of urdu poetry to criticize and electrify readers against the oppressive political regimes threatening the subcontinent faiz belonged to the progressive movement a collective of writers and poets who in the decade leading up to the 1947 independence of india and pakistan embodied a revolutionary aesthetic this group of writers and thinkers believed suffering could be done away with through action they could not separate art from responsibility each line they wrote was an active commitment to the issues of the time and also an attempt to empower their readers our present poem when autumn came was originally written in urdu and was translated in english by naomi lazard an american poet and it belongs to faiz's anthology entitled the true subject now this is in nutshell about the biography of 
Phrasomet fails. Now coming back to the text when autumn came. Now when autumn came, the title is very interesting and we have to know that the title of a piece in literature is very important. Actually the title indicates the subject matter of the particular text. It may be a poem, it may be a short story, it may be a novel, it may be a drama. But from the title we can guess something. Now from the title what we can guess we have to understand this. This is the pre-reading part of the text. Now the first thing that we have to keep in mind before going through the text is that the poem when autumn came in is not a poem about glorification of autumn season. What the British poets like uh, John Keats, Shelley, etc. usually did in some of their poems. As we have already discussed that the poet Fez Ahmed Fez imbibed with revolutionary zeal so that his poems are naturally filled with voices of protest against the cruelties done towards the marginals the weaker section of the society. So, in an unusual take on autumn, the poet Fez Ahmed Fez portrays the season as a time of harsh cruelty and violent death. Autumn is symbolized as a period of misery and loss. The poem is allegorical, that is, it has two meanings. One is surface level meaning and the other is deeper level meaning. In surface level, we shall get a panoramic view of the natural activities of autumn season. In deeper level, the poet will be talking symbolically the story of exploitation done towards the weaker section by the so-called guardian of the society. Now we are entering the text. The poem starts with this is the way that autumn came to the trees. It striped them down to the skin, left their ebony bodies naked. Now what does autumn mean here? Here autumn means the period of hopelessness a time when the upper class torments and humiliates the lower class. Trees. By the word trees, the poet wants to mean the poor people. Then we have another word which should be discussed. This is ebony. Ebony means black trunk of trees. Now what does the poet want to say in these lines? In the first three lines, the poet wants to tell us the intensity of oppression done towards the poor section.
it shook out of their hearts the yellow leaves, scattered them over the ground. Anyone could trample them out of shape, undisturbed by a single moan of protest. Now, what is it here? Here, it stands for the autumn season. Autumn season shook out yellow hearts of the trees by making their leaves fall on the ground. Anyone could trample them out of the shape. Now, what is the meaning of the word trample? The meaning of the word trample is crush under one's feet. A beautiful metaphor of exploitation. Moan. The meaning of the word moan is a soft sound of pain. Now, the last two lines, anyone could trample them out of shape, undisturbed by a single moan of protest, signify a great message of poet. Actually, the poet here wants to say that the upper class humiliates the poor section so mercilessly that they do not even have the courage to protest. Even if they protest, they are not heard by anyone. So, this is an excellent example of the intensity of exploitation done towards the subaltern section by our so-called guardian of the society, the upper section. Now we have to analyze the first danger. In first danger, the poet shows autumn making its appearance as a harsh aggressive person who uses violence and forced to stripe the leaves of the branches of the trees. The leaves of the trees turn from green to yellow with the onset of autumn and one by one fall to the ground below. Interestingly, in America, autumn season is referred to as fall. In these lines, the poet compares the bare trunks of the trees to the poor and downtrodden section of people who have had a long tragic history of oppression and exploitation being enslaved for centuries by upper class people who possess the right to rule. It may be compared to the global phenomena of exploitation of black people by the white. The yellowing leaves of the trees are like the hearts of these oppressed section being shaken and tortured by the ruling class as they are led off, bound and chained, mute and silent in their suffering. Thus, autumn is depicted as a cruel, heartless oppressor bringing suffering and violence with him.
now we have to read the second stanza of the poem the birds that herald dreams were exiled from their song each voice torn out of its throat they dropped into the dust even before the hunter strung his bow now what does actually the word bird here means here birds mean poets reformers or revolutionaries they were the birds were exiled from their song now what does the expression actually mean the poets who are the messengers of new dreams that is reformation cannot express themselves they lose their voice the society does not allow them to do so each voice torn out of its throat now voice torn out of its throat means censorship that you are not supposed to say anything you cannot cross the limit it is about censorship they dropped into the dust even before the hunter strung his bow the hunter strung his bow this is an excellent metaphor of death literally the expression the hunter strung his bow means death now we are to explain the second stanza as days become colder and shorter many birds start their migration to warmer lands and thus one can no longer hear the sweet songs of these birds during the autumn months however the poet continuing with the theme of violence and cruelty paints a vivid moving picture of a heartless person brutally ripping out the voices the vocal cords of the birds from their throats so that the birds drop dead to the ground even though the birds had been exiled or separated from their songs the person seems to perform this mindless act of cruelty not giving them the chance or time to leave the land allegorically the birds are nothing but the poets revolutionary poets who have been imprisoned and whose voices have been stopped by the ruling section so that they cannot express the message of a classless society stanza 3 oh god of may have mercy bless these withered bodies with the passion of your resurrection make their dead veins flow with blood again now here god of may denotes spring season by the first two lines the poet wants to give us a message a prayer to the 
God of May, that is spring, to have mercy on trees and bless them with a new life. We have come across a new word, resurrection. The word actually means the revival or renewal of life and hope. I am reading these lines again. O God of May, have mercy. Bless these withered bodies with the passion of your resurrection. Make their dead veins flow with blood again. Now, here's the analysis of this particular stanza. In this stanza, resurrection means to rise from the dead. In other words, to come back to life. In the given lines, the poet now appeals to the more merciful God or authority of the month of May to infuse or inject new life into the dried out, shrunken bodies of the birds and the trees so that they too could come back to life. The seasons of the year symbolize the cycle of life and death, of regeneration, of continuity, etc. The months of April and May are the time of new growth of renewal. Now the Last danger, that's the remaining couplet. Give some tree the gift of green again. Let one bird sing. Now, what does the expression, the gift of green, actually mean? Here, the gift of green means life, happiness, and vitality. That is spring of life. Now the analysis of the last danger, that is the remaining couplet. In the last two lines, the poet wants to wind up in a hopeful note. Thus, the last stanza signifies an evolution from hopelessness to hope, from a class-based society to a regenerated one, from autumn to spring. So, we may say that the poem ends with a message of hope in the midst of hopelessness. The poem is a poem of revolution. It urges for a new world, a new Arcadia, where there is no suffering, where there is no class-based society, and where everything is governed by justice, equality, fraternity. Thank you.